Hey, so I'm working on this computer here that I got off of eBay. It says the brand's Tandem Computers. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's hard to find some information on it. I'm thinking it's just a, a computer that went along with a terminal monitor for some kind of mainframe. The company made uh, really redundant computer systems for banking industry and, and people who needed computers that were going to be reliable. And uh, just can't find any information on this type of computer. So this is, it's got a Z80 processor. You know, I think it has maybe 32K RAM, 32K EEPROMs. Uh, there's some kind of a, like a EEPROM chip here. Um, these are serial chips. So what I've done so far is I've traced out the power pin out on here. So this is the edge card connector, which there are ports on the back of here. They don't seem to be any kind of standard. I, I was thinking maybe that's a DB9 serial port, but it's not. And that's, uh, I'm guessing has serial, but that seems to be the only place where power is coming in. So I guess the monitor powered the board. So here's the back. It's got places for three cards. But so the pin out, it's pin one right here is negative 12 pin 2 is positive 12 3 and 4 are 5 volts and 5 is ground and also grounds over here this is a 128 pin connector so it's not like a s100 bus or anything like that and um i did look up these chips here i believe these are serial chips so my plan right now is to put power on the bus and hook the oscilloscope to the, the pins on here that I believe to be um, serial output and see if I get anything. If so, I can trace it back to these connectors and maybe hook it into the computer, run um, you know, putty or something and, and see if anything gets displayed on the screen, maybe give us an idea what this is. Like I said, I, I haven't found much on the internet, but I did find one advertisement for some terminal monitors and um, for, I guess, a big mainframe system had a picture of a giant computer behind it and and uh, this was sitting under it, but most of the other pictures I found the monitors didn't have something under it, so I, I don't know if exactly what it is. Uh, this capacitor right here is for the 5 volts, and it is shorted, so I need to replace it first. But um, after that, I'm going to power it up and see, see what I get. I'm going to lift this capacitor and make sure that is where the short is. In fact, let me show you. I go from 5 volts to ground, about 43 ohms. So let's lift this capacitor and see if that clears. No, it didn't, so that's not what the problem is. Okay, so I put, I went around a little on the board. I didn't see anything else wrong. I was, I was measuring a couple different places on the board to see if the resistance was lower. And uh, it was pretty consistent all around the board. So I put a little bit of voltage. I put a, about a volt onto the 5 volt pins. And it was pulling about 100 milliamps. So I let it sit for a little while, nothing was getting warm. I slowly turned it up and I was checking it with a the thermal camera. The only thing really getting warm is these two serial devices right here, which are powered off of five volts. So let's, let's show you here. So the two things on top of each other are the, are the serial chips. The thing to the right is just the processor. And, um, and I, so I went ahead and got it all the way up to five volts and it's only pulling a little over an amp. So maybe it's normal. Maybe it's doing what it needs to be doing. Definitely nothing smoking or getting too hot. Let's see, that's uh, 87 degrees according to this. So definitely not, not very warm. So I think I'm gonna move forward and power the rest of the board and see what happens. Okay, so I put the board on a piece of foam just to keep it from 
sitting on the metal case. It's painted, but just in case. And and uh, got negative volt, negative 12 connected here, 12 connected here, five volts and ground. So let's power it up. So when I power this up, it's only gonna put five volts on the, the five volt part. So if I measure power supply over here, I mean five volts. I measure across here, should get five volts. Not getting five volts, you're getting 2.5. Okay, so if I go across the power cable, looks like it's dropping 1.3 volts. And if I go across the ground, it looks like it's dropping 1.2 volts. Let's see what the current is. Yeah, it's only one amp. Okay, this, this cable must not be not be good enough. I had a lot of trouble with those cables and bad connections at the end. Let me find something better and we'll get back. Alright, I switched some cables around. So let's see. 4.8 volts. So that should be good. Okay, so we need to set the positive and negative voltage. So it's pulling 3 amps now on the 5 volts. I still don't know if that's correct, but I did look at it with a thermal camera and nothing seems crazy. So let's set the positive and negative voltage. Alright, so just make sure it's hooked up right. 4.9. Okay, so this should go to positive 15. So I'll bring it up. 1.4, I'm going to go ahead and do the negative a little bit, just make sure i got everything hooked up correctly. So this should go negative. It does. Just make sure nothing's pulling any... No, no current anywhere. Okay, so I... Go ahead and bring these up. That's 5 volts. 10 volts. Alright, so let's check these. This should be negative 10 volts. It is. It should be positive 10 volts. It is. So let's go ahead and bring them up to 15. Okay, so still a voltage check. We've got 5 volts, 15, and negative 15. Alright, so right now it is powered and everything seems fine. Let's get the thermal camera going so we can make sure that nothing's getting hot. Yeah, I'm fine tuning these voltages a little bit. Alright, so I got negative 15 point. Eight four It's a little touchy. There. Negative fifteen point two, that'll be fine. And the positive fifteen is fourteen point five nine. Bring it up to 15.1. Okay, everything looks good. Look at it with a the thermal camera. Yeah, it's saying the hottest devices are still those serial devices, and they're up to 112 Fahrenheit, which isn't hot, so we'll let that go for now. Yeah, I can't feel them. They definitely have a little heat on. So we'll just let those ride for now. All right, let me get the oscilloscope. Okay, so I'm set up here with this little, well, this little two-channel portable oscilloscope I got on eBay. I think it's like 120 bucks or something. Um, yeah, I, I think these little things are cool. I, I have one of the little one-channel ones, but um, 
just saw they came out with two channel, which makes it much more practical. So um, I don't know if it'll work for everything, but it'd be good for stuff like this. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's cut it on and see if we get anything. So it should pull up to 12 volts whenever it's idle. And we should see some stuff. So there's definitely some data there. Okay, that's a good sign. So let's look at it on this chip, which is an identical device. Yeah, nothing there. Okay, so that's for something else. So I'm guessing that's for the monitor, maybe this is for the keyboard. I'm not sure. Um, let's see what else. So we need to figure out how where that data is coming out over here so we can then trace it to the IO port so we can actually hook the computer to it. So this is going to be a little bit difficult, but um so we'll just I I traced some of the pins of that display port to these three, so we'll try those. Alright, there's definitely some activity there. Definitely some activity there. Alright, that looks like that might be the display. It's a higher voltage now, but that was that was five volts, I'm guessing. And then it probably goes through a driver ship to get pulled up to 12. And that's one of the pins that I traced to the display port, so that makes sense. Let's see. Alright, two volts. Five alright, we're on five volts per division. So that should be yeah, twelve volts. RS232. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, so pin four there. Now we can trace that out to the to the display port on the back of there. Let me get it hooked back up and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I was wrong. The uh, serial, that, that pin that we traced earlier doesn't go to the display port. It actually goes to the keyboard port. So it has something to do with the keyboard. So it appears the keyboard is serial. Uh, it's just a different pin out. Pin one's the signal we saw, so that that'd be the RX to the keyboard or the TX from the from the computer. So if I look on the display port, if I go to pin two, you can see we have a lot of data. And let me set change the scale here. If it says it's at around 19 kilohertz. And if we go to pin six, see we have a square wave. So let me adjust this. There. There. So it's about a little over three volts. And if I bring the time scale way down, We get a couple of them. You can see it's 60 hertz. So 60 hertz sounds like a vertical sync to me for video. So the 19 kilohertz must be a horizontal sync. It's just a low resolution. I don't know whatever predates VGA. M M something. So just a black and white. So we have to find the signal. Well, if I turn this, the actual video signal. So if I turn this way down. found a, I think this is it, it's on pin 4, so there's definitely something there. So 2 is horizontal sync, 4 is ver four signal, 6 vertical sync, So, and then of course it has the, the voltages to power the board on here too, so each of these voltages are showing up out here. Um, I don't know what anything else is, everything else is just kind of reading zero. So let me get a monitor and see if I can rig up a way for us to connect to that and see if the monitor will will read it. Okay, so I've put it back together. I uh, did try breaking it out and connect it to the VGA um, and put it on the display just to see if it would somehow pick it up, but obviously that's not going to work. Um, 
So I doubt that I'm going to buy a monitor for this. It's just kind of something I saw. I thought it was kind of neat. So the question is what I'm going to do with it. I mean, it appears that we have a, a, um, a working serial output, at least one, to the keyboard port. Um, so I assume the processor is running. You know, power supplies all seem to work fine. Nothing seems shorted. So um, I'm guessing the thing's working. I guess I don't really care what it does. You know, I'm assuming it's some kind of terminal program or something. So it's probably not useful anyway. So I may just rip the ROMs off of it and, um, you know, kind of map out where the memory is and and uh, maybe try to put like CPM on it or maybe just write some software. I'm not really sure. But um, for now, I think we've done what I, what I kind of wanted to do. I just wanted to make sure the thing operated. And I'm um, going to set it to the side. And if anybody has any ideas, let me know. I'm kind of open to suggestions. I kind of like getting just old stuff and making it useful in some way. So, Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.